Welcome back to BTS Bros Talk Supercars. I'm AJ. And I'm Curtis. And we have got something really, really special for you. Say very exclusive. Hit it, AJ. One in a million. One in Roll the a montage. Million. One in a 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 million. You know they're coming. We are here with the Lamborghini Reventon. AJ, do you mean Reventon? Yeah, I can't do the roll on the R. Well, I so, think that um, hopefully I've said it correct now as well. <laughs> no, I think you are correct. But uh, yes, we are here with the Lamborghini Reventon. Um, this was first unveiled in the 2007 Frankfurt Motor Show, and it was actually the most expensive Lamborghini that Lamborghini have ever made. Fundamentally, it is a. Le <laughs> what? what are you laughing at me? No, I was just, Wait, what? But just thinking of the car, thinking it's the most expensive car Lamborghini's ever made. It's the most, I'm going to say, one of the wildest cars taking things from the F15 fighter jet. It's just mental. It's the beginning of, in my head, what is like that beginning of like hype cars, limited number cars. This is fundamentally an LP640 Mercer Lago underneath. But as Kurt said, it has got a complete new exterior and interior, all based off imitating the aggression of the F-15 fighter jet, and it definitely does have that. Can I just hold you there? It Please, literally yes. does. From this angle, you can actually see it. Look at this. Look how these lift up. Now, these drop down when the car's turned off, and they lift up normally when the car's on, and that just gives it that fighter-esque look. Just imagine an F-15 fighter jet, and it's got the small, sharp, pointy wings. It doesn't need big wings like a normal plane. It's got that much power and aggression. It only needs tiny things to guide it through the sky. And that is what this is right here. I love it. Yeah, but I think the only thing, we'll come back to the front, is that is making this car so unique and so, well, actually, what it is today, I feel like cars don't actually have this amount of detail in certain aspects. There were only 20 coupes made of this. Yeah. And in the 2009, I think they released another 15 roadsters. And this is one of only three right-hand drive cars. So uh, this is a very exclusive car. So if you do want to show off to your friends that actually know a thing or two about cars, this is probably the one you need to get. But what I do actually think is, which sort of, it's heartbreaking for me, what? is it's 18-inch alloy wheels. It's what? actually oh. heartbreaking because I know the car's so low, but these have got 18 inch alloy wheels. They've got a turbine design on them, which are all carbon fiber. Now that isn't actually just for the design as well. It's actually for aerodynamics and for um, cooling as well into the brakes. I feel because like Porsche Taycan have come along 15 years later and gone, you know what? We'll kind of make our own version of Porsche yeah, actually, what Lamborghini. that's so true, now, yeah. It's just coming to yeah. my brain right now with the, uh, the carbon aero on them. But I think the thing is with this car, Curtis, is obviously with a um, very, very original name of paintwork, Reventon Grey. Yeah, Reventon Grey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Um, <laughs> but no, when it comes down to the design, based on the F15, we do love the angular shape of this car, the extra, to be honest, even the wing mirrors, I've only just noticed this right now as we stand here, like having this extra panel within here, yes, they are quite rectangular and probably not the best to actually look out of in the no, side. I, no, I love it though, AJ. I think this makes it look a lot nicer. Normally how you've got the thin part for the wing mirror, how this actually stretches back and it almost feels like it's connected to the car. It is one with the car. I like it. But then it comes down to the details for me. I think like, for example, this petrol cap here, I'm going to open it up for you now. If you just look at this, the detail on this, each bot, bolt, it just looks great. And then we're going to go to open it up and then <laughs> you love that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's a party trick and it is, oh, it, it's, it's, solid. it's solid. It feels so good. It feels like if I was flying, I'm definitely not worried that the plane's going to fall apart with something like this. It is actually brilliant. Well, the first thing I did, AJ, when I saw it, I actually I grabbed it. You went it to give it a grab? Yeah, and it actually, it, you can't get into it. So there's something I find very interesting about this car as well is it's not symmetrical on either side. You see on this side here, as you've got this big intake coming in here, and then you've got this gap here where we can see a radiator in the back. Now on the other side, it doesn't have this. So this has air coming in here, air coming in here to cool that radiator down, nice carbon fiber trim around. Then if we come onto the other side, you can actually see that it's completely different. So as you can see, it's blocked off here. So it doesn't have a radiator here. Now what this does, it's still a real wing. It's still for aerodynamics and, and efficiency. The air comes in here 
and it just cools down the brakes behind. It doesn't get sucked into any radiator and it doesn't go straight to the engine. So that's the difference between each side, which just looking at it from an outside perspective, you would never ever see it really. Well, it is. Unless you knew about the car and really looked into it, you wouldn't actually see it. It's a technical detail that somebody who likes technical details would know, but how often do you really look at both sides of the car at the same time? If anything, if I'm yeah. looking at you right now, how often would I look at both of your ears at the same time? It's just not something you do. Well, one, I'd be looking at one we, or the other. Why would you look at your ears whilst talking to somebody? That's what you've been going wrong all your life, AJ. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just giving facts. I'm just giving points of view. This is my point of view. Mine's sometimes a bit <laughs> weirder than most. But no, it is, it is a great bit of detail there, as you oh, said. Just a bit of dirt on there would just look better. From what point occurs, it's, again, Key, keyhole. It's, it's a, this is a thing at the moment now. It's nice. But as we are moving towards the back of the car, f simple things for me, like the actual design of, I do love being able to see an engine. It's one thing for me, I think that with a car that you're paying, well, upwards of a million pounds, yep. you should be able to see the quality that is there with that V12 engine. And having this glass, having this, what is actually a floating I love wing. it. I think like, this is like, so look sexy. Look at it. it it's, it's brilliant. And having the brake so light sexy. in there. And again, this kind of angular details coming towards the rear. And when you actually look at the rear here, I don't even know if, if you can describe that when it's this size as being an exhaust no, pipe or literally a, a place <laughs> to get into it. A, a, as a cubby hole, it may as well I be. I just thought, where can we stick another hexagonal shape? And they thought, let's just do the exhaust. But then the, when you do look at an F15 fighter, like, like the sheer size of this, it does make sense. This car is kind of the predecessor to what would be obviously the event store with this kind of, if you say like Y-shaped lights coming through. But I love it, I love it. And I, actually, AJ, on the front lights as well, they have a, um, a honeycomb LED design on the front of the lights. And I really think it adds to just the small parts to the car. I love it. Um, coming to the, like, whilst well, we're at the back of the way, oh, yes. let's hit it. Let's okay. hit some engine specs. Because as you said, yes. we've got that open glass engine here, which is beautiful to stare at because it's a V12, naturally aspirated 6.5 litre engine, pushing out around 641 brake horsepower, 660 Newton meters torque, taking it to naught to 60 in around 3.4 seconds. So it is Even with your small still. wheels. Even with my small wheels, Jen, it revs up to 8,000 RPM. Now, I'd love to drive one of these. This for me is a bit of a dream car. I love Lamborghinis and this one being one of three. Let's, let's, let me open up. You stay there, Curtis. I let me open it. this up. Because it's just the structure that's built around it is just kind of like, but the whole design of how it's, yeah, just flick it up in the middle. <laughs> Keep talking, we're gonna Kes. leave him. No, no, no. We're yeah. gonna leave him here. <laughs> no, it's we're not. Just, I, I've seen how he does it. Just a little. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, it was yeah, there. Yeah. That was that was really quick that time. I think. <laughs> not only the engine, but if you're looking at it from the back, just what AJ was saying from the floating wing here, how it just literally has that Tesla T. I know I shouldn't say that. Well, how, <laughs> it, no, it's not meant to be. It was far before Tesla was ever born. I was thinking around. more, it's like, it's like a, a sword. Yeah, well it is. It's aggressive. With a, with a serrated edge. And it should be aggressive because the car is aggressive. And obviously you've got the rear wing here that is active, which is amazing. But coming around to actually getting, we're going to put this back down because I feel like, yeah, but we just, it's a bit of a jungle gyms in here, isn't it, actually? Hey, look at that naturally, naturally aspirated V12 engine. I know you're <laughs> saying V12 engine, and I've just ended up going with jungle gyms, but actually when you can appreciate the carbon, the way it's positioned, it's, it is at the centre and the heart of the car um, for me. Just have to touch it. <laughs> it's, it's, It'll be all right, baby. It'll be all right. <laughs> is it a bit warm? <laughs> okay, you can put that down. Well, crikey, Curtis, you really, 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 you really put that down, didn't you? <laughs> okay, we're going to get into the car now and show some of the details. Mm. So I'll let, oh, you have to be on the driver's side. The one thing I here know. with these doors is they do open up directly straight up, which I think is fantastic, especially for a car that is actually, in reality, Curtis, this wide. So when you're at the shopping centre or wherever, wherever you are and you fit in between two cars, you can easily get out. Yeah, but... Um, you do have to say, yes, it is obviously, what, are you okay? Well, if, thank, <laughs> thank God the roof's not on, put it like that. Oh my, I don't know, you, you wouldn't be able to get in with the roof. I, 
actually don't think go I on put your seatbelt on be able to uh, yeah, I knew you were gonna <laughs> so with the lamborghini the seatbelt is in the center here so most people as curtis did would go to the right as you usually would do in a car but lamborghini is on the center part just to annoy most people the way that they would do things but the one thing is in here curtis obviously i was gonna look for here you've put your doors panel down so in the door card you have got the revington on the side there but the best thing about this car is we're going to start the car up in a second and show you the dials because the dials are designed off the f-15 fighter jet I so as you rev you yeah. can see the lines go up in the sides and well it just it, i think it's one of those things if you were a kid you'd be like you know what i'm going to design this i feel like a kid's gone in a room and gone lamborghini car fast fighter jet let's put them together <laughs> And yeah, no, but, th but that's what Lamborghini is. So it's, it's a board like, meeting. You've gone board meeting. Lamborghini yep, is let's stick the wildest things possible, wildest imagination, and just make it into a car. Let's make it happen. I love how they've actually followed through the uh, the grey throughout the entire car. The yeah, Alcantara, the Alcantara, the leather, and then straight with the carbon fibre. But the one center. thing, just quick question: is is the steering wheel a bit off center and the pedals right. off center? So and the chair a bit yeah, off so center. How I'm sat right now is my chair wants to go this way over there. My steering wheel wants to go over there, and my pedals, well, I feel like they're on the other side of the car. So. That's They're, why I'm going to hold on for dear life with this. Yeah, they, they really <laughs> are off when you're sat in it. And it makes it so noticeable as well, because how the dashboard's done, it's done in a crosshair design. So you're actually looking exactly straight where this goes, but then your body just feels off. But I do like little things like this, obviously concealed in here. Not that you want to, but like little kind of like, it's a small little details. Not much. I uh, know. <laughs> but, but... It's, it's worth the thought, isn't it? Well, now old fashioned them buttons, I will keep that closed, AJ. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so seeing as though we're sat in the car here, Curtis, do you want to start the engine up and show the dial, show the actual I, F fighter feeling? This makes it special. Kid this is, PlayStation. This, this really is special. I think we'll keep it in neutral, that's for sure. And as you can see all here, it's like you've got your runway dials all going ready forwards. It's sort of telling us where we'd be taking off, what our altitude is, but that's in the miles per hour that we're going on there. I love how it's done, it makes it so special. And then you can just change it through here. Or this one. <laughs> and then you can change the dial straight to this here as well, which I th think looks mean anyway. But the other one for me, seeing as though we've got that F-15 fighter jet style that's the perfect go on one. just tap it tap it i want to see it going up there dom we got a close shot on this one no no don't go in first you're in first gear yeah well, what when you said oh well, you meant tap the i don't even meant tap that no i don't mean to play in the gear like i've got two cars wait, in front wait, wait. of me no i don't mean drive hold both neutral hey <laughs> I had a bit of hot sweat then, Curtis. Well, no, I thought I, we thought gonna, meant, I, thought I was going to take out the, just uh, show, show it go the monster. The <laughs> Slow it. See you there, revving up. And I love it how it just comes up like wings on the side, just as a fighter jet would. So this is the Lamborghini Revington. So it is one of 35, but more to the point, it is one of three right-hand drive cars. It is fundamentally- Don't mind me. The Lamb Are you okay, Kurt? It was easier to get in than get out of. Yeah, this <laughs> you is just the thing put it with like Kurt. that. I feel like we can do a whole video of Kurt is getting out of cars. <laughs> But more to find, it is one of the Lamborghinis that if you are a Lamborghini collector or somebody who has got a multiple Lamborghinis, this is the one to show off, the one that you must have. And to be honest, in my opinion, the one that you actually need. And let's be honest, you'll know that there's only two other people that would have the same car in the entire world. So I would get it if I was you. <laughs> On that note, we will see you next time. Please like, subscribe follow, comment, whatever it may be. Curtis is probably going to say something that I forgot already. <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching the video. <laughs> that. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. This video is brought to you by Collier's Powerful Welsh Cheddar. And the fact of the video is, the first real supercar was the Lamborghini Miura. It was built in 1966 and went on until 1973. Is it really a factor? Yes, it is, AJ. Just, just... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>